Hello and welcome back to the Naked Marriage Podcast. We are Dave and Ashley Willis. And on this podcast, we address the truth about sex, intimacy, and lifelong love. And you guys, we are so glad that it's summertime. All the topics this summer um, are super important. The a vast variety of different topics, but they're yes. all fan favorite topics that we're revisiting because of your you guys response. Write us. Yeah. And so um, so we've we've kind of we've heard you, we've listened to you, and and we're revisiting some of these really important uh, conversations and today's is super important. So how do you stay connected? How do you make sure you don't fall into that rut mm -hmm. of slipping apart? You know, what are the, the habits that you need to implement? And Ashley and I are going to share some things that have worked for us. We're going to give examples of kind of how you can recognize red flags if you are yeah. start, starting to experiencing that drift and, uh, and what to do about it. So no matter where you are in your marriage, I think this episode is going to help you get even closer. It will, and, and very practical. And so we're excited about this one. Let's dive into today's episode. So my spouse is absent. I mean, just the title of that is is this downer, and my heart breaks for those who are in this situation. And there are different levels of absence. I yeah. mean, there's actual physical absence where uh, a spouse is just avoiding the other spouse mm -hmm. by being gone, by jumping into hobbies or pouring themselves into career or or constantly volunteering for for jobs that are going to take them out of town yeah um and then then there's you know there's more subtle forms of absence where you're in the same room but you're just disconnected you know they're constantly lost in their phone or in other things and they're just not giving you that attention and even if they're physically there with you you feel alone mm -hmm. and regardless of where on the spectrum you are, if you feel like you have an absent spouse, or if you're listening to this and you might feel a little bit of conviction that you have been the absent spouse, mm -hmm. then we hope this episode helps. And and not to throw judgment, I know sometimes, you know, that absence, it, it comes not from terrible intentions. It comes from, I'm trying to provide for my family, so I'm pouring myself into work, or I'm, um, you know, there's a lot of conflict at home, and I haven't known, I feel like when I try to deal with it, it gets worse, and so I've just kind of pulled away because my absence seems to be better than us fighting. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the goal is that we're going to, you should always be working towards being together in a healthy way, in an interactive way, and to not settle for prolonged absence. Absolutely. And I know that, again, we recognize that there are certain situations for work, or maybe if you're a military person, where you may have to have a more prolonged season of absence, or maybe one of you has an illness where you have to be hospitalized. I mean, there's a lot of different scenarios, sure. but we're talking about where someone is just actively choosing to be anywhere else but home. And I think a lot of this comes down to avoidance, like you mentioned, Dave. But I think that there's also some people just like as, as human beings, we want to go where we feel like we're winning. And a lot of times where we see this happen, it's it's husbands. It could be a husband or a wife, you know, going to be with the friends that are telling them yes more than they're telling them no and that think great of them and that want to be with them. So they're always finding a reason to go on a girl's trip or a guy's trip or to, to stay, you know, to go after work for drinks or, or dinner or whatever with, with the girls or the guys and then come home for just a little bit so that they don't have to actually talk to their spouse and deal with their family. And that's just, it, it's not healthy for a marriage and it will not sustain a marriage. I mean, you can't have a strong relationship without spending a lot of time together. Like you've got to be together. And, um, and even when you are not physically in the same, space, really going out of your way to connect in other ways, like through all the technology we have today. And, 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 you know, there's so many ways that you can connect, even if you're not physically in the same space, but there isn't anything that really replaces that. Like you've got to, you've got to spend a lot of time, a lot of quantity time together in order to have quality time together. And I know that's not what a lot of people want to hear, but you know, we've seen this play out in people's lives where, um, you know, we've seen, you know, military people often get these assignments for deployments, but we've seen where people had the choice to keep on taking a deployment and, or, or, to, you know, asking, you know, putting in and asking, can I have a year off from this or whatever to be with my family? And we've seen where people choose to instead go on a deployment because they're like, you know, every time I come home, I don't feel like I'm winning. I feel like yeah. it's harder at home. I don't feel like they give me as much respect at home as they were, as my people at work respect me. And, and you don't even have to be in the, the military to have that dynamic. I've known business people where they'll take every business trip that where they go weeks at a time somewhere just because they don't want to have to deal with the stuff at home. Yeah. And, um, because the truth is our spouse and our kids, I mean, they see, they see all of us, right? They see the good, the bad, and the ugly. Whereas sometimes at work, you know, we can just put on this persona 
of this, whoever we want to be. Right. And, um, and then too, it, when you're on these work trips, you often can kind of just blow off steam and, and, and yeah, go, go get your spa treatment. Go hang it with can the be guys. glamorous. And, right. Right. And, um, it's easier, frankly. Right. I mean, it, it work, it, you, you can get pats on the back for a lot more things, right? right? You can get promoted, you can get raises, you can get accolades, you can get respect through, through you know, people have to listen to you if you're in a position of authority. Um, at home, the dynamics are totally different. You know, there's there's no awards, there's no, like the pats on the back, you can encourage each other and hopefully you do. Sure. But not as much in a structured way. You're not going to get right. a pay raise for being great, you know, mom or dad or spouse, but yet those are by far the most important jobs in, in all of life. Right. Those are the ones that really count. Like those are the ones that leave a generational legacy. I mean, if you, you leave your job after decades, you know, they're going to have your job posted in a, in a week or two mm -hmm. and just plug somebody else into that. But there's nobody that can be a husband or wife to your spouse, father or mother to your kids the way that you can. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where your legacy can be strongest. And that's so worth fighting for guys. You've, yeah. you've got to be willing to fight for that. I'm not saying don't also be good at your job. Of course, but you've got to do it with boundaries. You you ha you cannot do it at the expense of your family because any success that we achieve at the expense of our families is not real success. No, it just it isn't. And you know we we've heard stories where for various reasons you know a husband or a wife has had a demanding job where they've had to spend significant amounts of time away from home and then all of a sudden they're retired from that and they are you know they have all this time and their spouse who has been at home this whole time is just dying to have this time like they're like okay now finally we have our golden season we can do all this stuff together we can dream together maybe we start a business together maybe we just travel together whatever it is and then the spouse who's been you know away and absent for a lot um, they don't know what to do with that. Like they literally don't know what to do. And you really see this breakdown in the marriage and it's, it causes the spouse who's been at home. When I say at home, I don't mean like they've just been sitting at home, but the one who's kind of been holding on the fort, so to speak, they go reeling. Like they're yeah, like, what yeah. are you talking about? Like for 20 years, for 30 years, whatever it is, I've been waiting for this moment. And now you're sad because you can't just go escape. I mean, it would be hurtful, right, sweetie? Yeah. It would yeah. be extremely hurtful. And so if that's your dynamic, you know, I know that's a hard place to be, but it will take you both of you sitting down and saying, okay, how do we want this season to look? How, you know, cause I want to be more present, but I haven't been. And first of all, it takes that person who's been absent. I think, I think it takes going to your spouse and saying, I'm so sorry. Like I, it wasn't my intention just to escape all this time. It wasn't my intention or maybe it was, if it was your attention, definitely own that. But I would just go to your spouse and say, I'm sorry that this hurt you. You know, I needed to be there more. And, and today is a new day. I want to do better about being present. And even when, you know, I'm physically here, if, if you feel like I'm kind of slipping away mentally, and emotionally, and I'm kind of absent that way, which is I think one of the most hurtful dynamics is when they are physically there, but absent in every other way, you know, give your spouse kind of the license to be able to speak into that and say, hey, come back to me, come back to me. I, yeah. I need you here with us. Like, we need you to be present where your feet are. You know, we've, we've shared that before, our friend Paulette, who said, you know, be where your feet are planted. We, we need that. We all need that reminder that we, that we can't, you know, we could be physically in the same room with our spouse, but just absent every other way. And so we need those reminders. Yeah, we absolutely need those reminders. And, and avoidance will never ultimately solve the issue. Right. I think that there's a natural tendency to want to avoid problems instead of dealing with them, mm -hmm. but it doesn't it doesn't really avoid them. Like I have a neighbor that we've, I've joked about on here. I don't know him personally. He lives several houses down. I think things are getting better by the way. Oh the really? Neighbor. I have seen them together. What? I'm serious. Well, I'm, I, serious. I'm glad they're working on it. You see? So, um, but something shifted something in a good shifted, way. But good I way. joked every time I walked by this guy's house or drove by this house, rain or shine, literally heat, in the rain, he would be yes. out working in his yard all the time. And well, it describe is, he wasn't what he was actually doing. working. Like it, it wasn't even that his yard looked good. His yard didn't even look good. But he was just like piddling with stuff. He would just be like hand plucking little blades of grass for some reason yeah. or looking busy. It was as if in a comical way, he would rather do anything out in the elements than go inside where his wife is. Well, and this was a guy who was clearly retired. Right. Okay. Right. And just maybe 
the transition, not knowing what to do with yourself. I think a lot of people go through that. Right, I get that I to really a certain do. extent, but yeah. But when every single time I walk by your your wife's car is there and you're outside, it just you think, dude, go talk to your wife. Like, like what is happening? Or, or do something together. But let me just tell you, I have seen them outside together and walking together. There we go. And I just you thought go, I dude. smiled like in my heart. I was like. Yes, like See, something hope. has shifted, you know, and I don't know what that is for those people, but it probably took one of them saying, you know what? I miss you. Like, I miss you yeah. and I need you. And I think sometimes when when one of us is being absent or maybe both of us are, maybe both of us are avoiding each other, we can convince ourselves, well, I just don't really need them as much as I used to, which is just sad, right? It is sad. And I mean, sure, we go through different seasons where we maybe like actually have needs more than other seasons but we always in our emotionally need each other right and so i think just going to your spouse and being like i miss you i mean that's that says a lot it says a whole lot mm -hmm. and guys maybe that's exactly what needs to happen as a result of this episode right maybe that's it instead of hammering your spouse over the head with everything you're doing wrong or with how hurt or mad you are even though Yes, you have a right to do those things, but it's not probably going to help. Mm -hmm. But instead, to just tenderly, lovingly, vulnerably go into them and saying, I miss you. Mm -hmm. I miss you. I'm, I miss your friendship. Mm -hmm. I miss the connection with you. I miss conversation with you. I miss my right. wife. I miss my husband. Like, what can we do to reconnect? Right. Like, what can we do to be together more? And and say, what can we do? Instead of like, just tell them what you, I think in marriage in, in general, instead of saying, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. When you frame it as, what can we do? We, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. um, that's so you're, good. You're, ten, you're gonna tend to get a better response, but yeah, that's a great way to start the conversation. It is, and again, I mean, it, it might be awkward because I think when someone's used to just doing a lot outside of the home and away from their spouse, to have that re-entry is very hard. Yeah. It, and it feels like an itchy sweater. It feels like something that you're like, mm, I don't, I don't like this. I don't like this, this, you know, this isn't what I'm used to. I'm used to having more autonomy to do what I want to do with my work, with my friends, with whatever. And now all of a sudden I have to listen to like the opinions of my spouse and my kids or whatever. But let me tell you, it is worth the awkward cycle. Like you're gonna have to go through probably a time of awkwardness because you're used to this other way, but you've got to be you've got to be with the ones who love you the most and who you really love the most and maybe haven't shown it, you know, lately. And so be ready for it to be, you know, to feel awkward for a little bit. But the more you settle in and the more like those who are who are wanting you to re re enter give you that grace settling in. Because I mean, the spouse who's been holding on the fort needs to offer a lot of grace yeah, sure. in that re-entry. And um, you know, as as you both kind of navigate that time with a lot of grace for each other, a lot of love and respect for each other, and really willingness to listen to each other, I really think that it, it, it could turn this next season of your marriage into maybe your, your best season yet. Yeah, absolutely. And you can learn new things. I mean, no matter how long you're married, you can learn new things and new ways of doing things. And, um, it, it could really strengthen you in ways you didn't even know you needed to be strengthened. So good. Guys, we're going to cut this episode a few minutes short so that you can use that extra time to call your spouse right yes. now and say, I miss you. Yeah. Let's, let's connect. Mm -hmm. And we're praying that that conversation goes well. If we can help here at Exo Marriage, we've got a team at exomarriage.com slash help where you can set up an appointment to talk to someone and a trained team, a member of our mediator team who can help you navigate a road back to healing and health in your marriage. You don't have to figure it out alone. There's help available. God bless, guys. We'll see you next time.